Today, we're adding a kit to improve the shifting in our 2006 Sierra, and this time we're not taking the transmission out of the truck. Then it's a new coat of paint and racing stripes for Project Rolling Thunder. It's all today, here on Trucks. Hey guys, welcome to Trucks. Today, we've got our 06 GMC Sierra back in the shop for one more modification. Now, if you remember the last time you saw this truck, well, we took it up to the 8th Mile Drag Strip Music City Raceway to test out our newly installed nitrous kit. Now, the nitrous was working like a champ, but it may have been making a little bit too much power, especially on the 125 shot. All right, last run on the 125 shot. Let's hope she holds together. Decent launch. Nitrous on. The bottle was throwing tons of extra torque at this thing. A little more torque than the transmission appreciated. And after sensing a little slip in second gear, I got out of it. I don't think this transmission likes that extra power I lifted. Let's, uh, let's wrap this thing up and get home. <laughs> now, I guess we could have taken the easy way out and reinstalled the 75 horsepower jets and called it done. Because after all, we didn't have any transmission issues on the lower power levels but we've got 125 horsepower at our disposal and we want to be able to use it. But we don't want to spend thousands of dollars on a built up aftermarket high torque capacity transmission. We want to be able to upgrade what we've got just to the point where it can handle the occasional Saturday night trip down the drag strip at full power. Plus, this transmission's got less than 100,000 miles on it and if we treat it right and don't abuse it too much, we're hoping to get another 50 out of it. Now, our affordable part solution to our shifting problem comes from TCI, and it's one of their trans scat kits for 4L60Es. Now, the kit includes a transmission oil filter and gasket, valve body and transmission case gaskets, even a couple of drill bits specially sized that you'll need to drill out a few passages. It also includes all the springs and small parts necessary to complete the installation, which really shouldn't take that long. Now, over the years, we've installed several transmission kits like this, mostly either on some kind of an engine stand or on a bench top, which is, quite frankly, easier. But today, we're going to do it with transmission still in the truck, just like you guys would at home. Well, except for the lift, but we got to say we got to have a lift because our camera guy has to get up in here, too, so we can show you guys what we're doing. We pull the shifter bracket loose just to make it a little easier to pull that pan. We also loosen the exhaust for a little better clearance. And if this looks like a scene that's been repeated in your shop, we'll show you a fix for it. Let that gravity bleed, dry out. Take a look at what's inside the pan. Now, if you've ever had to drain the transmission fluid out of a transmission using that method, here's a project that you're gonna appreciate. What we're gonna show you how to do is install a drain plug into the bottom of the pan. But before we do that, let's take a look and see what's in here. This is fresh, it's never been apart, Truck's got nearly 100,000 miles on it, and we're looking for debris, for metal shavings, chunks of bad stuff, and it looks really nice and clean. The fluid's got a nice red color, and this magnet, which was brilliant for them to put it in here, collects all the metallic shavings from the clutch packs and uh, keeps it from circulating inside the transmission. So basically, we know this transmission hasn't been cooked, and it's in really good shape. So we're gonna get rid of this magnet, wipe it out a little bit, and right about here, put that drain plug in. Plug right about there. You wanna choose a location for your drain plug that's at a low point of the pan and is not gonna interfere with anything on the inside of the pan. Now the drain plug couldn't be any simpler. It's a nylon washer that gets pinched in between the nut and the shaft of the drain plug itself. Lock it in, snug it up, and you're done. And there you have your drain plug with an O-ring seal. You don't have to get a breaker bar to tighten. Keep it from leaking. Clean the gasket off this. We're ready to throw it back on there. Now, before we reinstall our pan, we want to improve the shifting of our old slush box. And that means dropping the filter and removing the wiring harness to the valve body and setting it to the side so we can remove the valve body. And to do that, we had to remove a bunch of bolts. But don't worry or get intimidated. There's a diagram showing exactly where all these different length bolts go. We also had to remove the transmission shift linkage so we can get the valve body out of there. 
And with that done, we can remove the accumulator housing, the gaskets, and the separator plate. All right, that's all the messy fun for now. Now the first part we're gonna be installing from the kit is a new spring for the pressure regulator. And to do that, we had to remove it from the transmission pump. Our small Matco snap ring pliers make it easy. Now with this little valve, remove the main spring. What we're after is the shorter spring that's on the inside. That way we can replace it with this little green spring supplied in the kit. You can see it's taller, looks a little stiffer too. And it goes back on the main spring and back up into its home. Now we can start work on the valve body. And the first thing we're gonna do is swap out the spring on the small accumulator valve. Now it's held in place by a roll pin. Once you remove it, well, it's as simple as swapping the springs with the one provided in the kit. Then we can carefully reinstall the spring and valve. And the roll pin that retains it, making sure it's below the surface of the valve body and fully installed. Next, we're gonna remove the forward accumulator cover from the valve body and replace the forward accumulator spring with the white spring supplied in the kit. And when reinstalling the cover, keep in mind, these are steel fasteners going into an aluminum case, so don't get carried away when tightening down the bolts. But if you do have access to a small torque wrench, well, it doesn't take much. Just eight foot-pounds, not too tight. Hey guys, welcome back to the shop. Well, we're in the middle of improving the shifting characteristics of our 06 GMC Sierra's automatic transmission. The next thing we're doing is drilling a couple of holes in the separator plate using the two different size drill bits supplied in the kit. Just be sure to reference the instructions and drill the correct holes. Next, we're gonna be removing the plastic accumulator piston from the accumulator housing. And we're using a little bit of compressed air to make it easier. Just be careful with the plastic piston and the O-ring as they'll both be reused. Then simply remove the two springs from the housing and replace it with the single spring supplied in the kit. And just reinstall the piston. All right, with all our modifications made and all our parts swapped out, we're just about ready to start reinstalling some parts. Now the kit came with two different gaskets, one marked V and one marked C. This one goes up against the transmission case, the other against the valve body on either side of the separator plate. Also, before reinstalling the valve body, you need to make sure that all seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven check balls are in the valve body where they're supposed to be. Now, if you've lost track of these, don't worry, there's a check ball diagram in the instructions. Just make sure they go back where they came from or where they're supposed to be. Now, there's an eighth check ball that fell down out of the transmission case that sat above the separator plate and in the case itself. So to help it defy gravity a little bit, well, we'll just apply a little bit of petroleum jelly. Or a lot. Now, the petroleum jelly will dissolve in the automatic transmission fluid, so it's nothing you need to worry about. And remember, the two gaskets supplied in the kit are different. They're marked V and C for the valve body or the transmission case, so make sure they end up in the correct location. Now basically what we're doing with this kit is improving and speeding up the way the transmission operates. By removing springs, drilling out orifices, or replacing springs with stiffer versions, we're basically speeding up the way the transmission shifts. And by increasing the line pressure, we're increasing the clamping force on the bands and the clutches that hold each gear. And that way, when we try to put a bunch of power through this thing, we don't see or experience any slippage. We're just trying to remove some of the Cadillac smoothness or shift qualities and replace it with a firmer, faster Corvette style shifting capability. Now keep in mind, this truck and transmission has 100,000 miles on it and the wiring harness and its connectors have seen plenty of heat so they might be a little bit brittle. So use care when plugging things back in and make sure you don't pinch the harness in between the valve body and the case. 
Also, don't forget to hook up your manual shift valve or you won't be going anywhere. Now, when it comes to tightening down hardware inside of a transmission or an engine, we're kind of sticklers for using the torque wrench. Not only does it prevent warpage or distortion from over-tightening the hardware, it prevents you from stripping out threads inside of aluminum and expensive parts. So if you're gonna do a bunch of work like this, or even a little bit, it might be a worthwhile investment to pick up a small inch-pound torque wrench. Now we're installing a new transmission filter and a new gasket that sits up inside of a bore inside the case. It can be a bear to replace, but we did it anyway. Now our magnet and our drain plug will clear anything inside of the transmission. We can finish this thing up. Hey, welcome back. When we first planned out Rolling Thunder, we had a definite look in mind, and we were bound to determine to pay tribute to some of the high-performance Ford vehicles in the past, the Thunderbolt cars and the Lightning pickup trucks. Even the name, Rolling Thunder, kind of pays tribute to that, as did the original paint scheme. It had a two-tone and a lightning bolt to separate the two colors. So we started with the black ground coat, which was the high-build primer from Clawson, and it looked black, but the problem was, every time we touched it, it scratched off and it looked like a chalkboard. It looked white. And primer, well, it doesn't have any UV screeners. So the moment we put it outside, it was going to start to deteriorate and get really ugly. So we liked the flat black look so much, we used a brand new product from the Eastwood company. It's called Dead Rat Flat Black. And it's Stealth Bomber Flat. It looks pretty darn cool. After spending a couple hours sanding the surfaces with 320 grit sandpaper and about 45 minutes worth of masking to cover up the headlights, the taillights, and all the windows, we carefully drove it into the spray booth with a little help from some friends. Hard to see when the windows are covered up. That's crazy. Dead Rat Flat Black is a single stage paint, meaning there's no clear coat that goes on top of it, although we have used a flat clear coat in the past. In a typical single stage paint, the strength and the gloss are built into the one coat, although with this being flat, well, of course there's no gloss. The paint job we're giving Rolling Thunder is what's commonly known in the industry as a scuff and shoot, meaning that we didn't take the mirrors off, I didn't slide the bed back or remove it, and all we did was bag the wheels. If we had been using a full gloss paint, well, the area between the bed and the cab would have showed dry spray. With a total flat black, we're not even going to see it, so it wasn't worth the effort. Whether it's full gloss or flat, the rules of painting still apply. You've got to overlap each stroke and work your way up or down the panels, depending on your personal preference. The important thing to remember is have a smooth, continuous coat throughout the vehicle and do one coat at a time. I'm using an HVLP spray gun with a 1.3 fluid tip, which produces a very fine atomization. And if you've ever painted before, you're probably noticing that my gun is really close to the surface. I've gotten used to a very fast gun speed with about four inches of distance between the spray head and the panel. This produces an unbelievably fine atomization, makes you work a little harder, but you get a better paint job. The biggest benefit to having this truck all one color, aside from looking like a completed vehicle, is that this is truly a top coat, meaning that when we scratch it, it's not gonna scratch off white. It's not gonna look like a chalkboard anymore. And it's gonna look like the racing thoroughbred that we built. Hey, welcome back to the shop. Well, you guys know that I'm a professional painter and seldom in the professional painting world do rattle cans and professional paint jobs mix, but now they can. This is called 2K Aerospray and it combines a button that releases a catalyst into the rest of the can, gets intermixed, gives you a 48 hour pot life and there's a variety of different colors and clears. We wanted a good, really high gloss clear on the Grand Amp stripes on the fender and we got it, simply. With about $20 a can in expense, we didn't have to break out the pneumatic spray equipment. It was a minimal amount of masking and a minimal amount of safety equipment. Check it out, pretty cool. Now there's about a 48 hour window of opportunity to where you don't have to sand the surface. So that's what we're doing here. I'm just masking off the stripes. With the first coat of the 2K Aerospray, it's a medium wet coat, which means you're not gonna see the full gloss. It dries to touch in about five minutes, so almost instantly, we're ready for the second coat. 
which is applied a lot slower and a lot heavier. So you really see the gloss coming through on these stripes. Now, other than looking cool, the first thing you notice is that it looks like a different color. But as you saw, it was on exactly the same paint. The difference you're seeing is the way the light is reflected off the gloss clear and not absorbed into the flat. Now, if your pickup truck is in need of some new shoes, well, check out one of the options from Kanadi. This is their Mud Hog Mud Terrain in a 37 by 1250 by 20 size. <laughs> Now, the deep lugs and high void tread design, well, that'll give you the traction you'd expect out of a mud terrain. But the advanced tread compound and all the tread siping, well, that'll give you traction in all weather conditions. <laughs> These Kanadi mud hogs are available between 31 and 37 inches tall, and they fit wheel sizes between 15 and 20 inches. Now, if you guys are looking to add to your electrical tool arsenal, well, check out the Power Probe hook. The hook is an easy to use, smart and powerful circuit tester that's got a couple of features not typically found in a piece of gear like this. Like their smart tip technology that senses the circuit and auto ranges the meter for you. It's also got the hot shot feature that lets you load test power and ground circuits with a push of a button, giving you a pass or fail. This tool can power up a motor, measure its amp draw and calculate its resistance all at the same time. So if you're a DIY guy, well, just less time working on your car. If you're a pro, you just made more money. Now, if you're a welder, you need to take a close look at this digital Elite Series helmet from Miller. This is their top of the line helmet with four individual arc sensors and a nice wide viewing area. Plus the ability to run this helmet in four different modes. They've got welding, cutting, grinding, and the X mode, which is good for outdoor applications along with a couple of other uses. These digital Elite helmets come with their own helmet bag and some replacement lenses. They're also available in a variety of styles, including this one, the Vintage Roadster. If you got any questions about any of this stuff, check us out on PowerBlockTV.com. And thanks for watching, Trucks. See you next week.